Welcome to Metaphorical Visualization, a paper about mapping from data to anything like cat images or stars in the sky. Now, the idea for the paper comes from seeing visualization as a form of a metaphor, from data to visuals. This works well for visualization because we as humans tacitly understand visual primitives. I don't have to explain to you how a large circle is larger than a small circle. And can we push this further? Can we map to something beyond the visual? We think that we can. For example, consider these three points, x, y, z. And what if I told you that the similarity between these points is like the similarity between words dog, house, and chimney? Now, already in your head, you probably have some idea of what that might be. If you're anything like me, house and chimney sounds quite similar, like chimney is a part of a house. Dog and house, maybe somewhat, because dog could live in a house or it could be a dog house. Dog and chimney, probably not so much unless there's a dog scent or something. So we could represent this with this little diagram here using traditional visualization. But we didn't have to do this because you already feel and perceive the similarities between the words. So if we have a similarity function for them, we could actually compute this automatically. And this is exactly what we do. So we call this distance-based metaphors. And given some data points and distance function between them, and a concept points like images or words, also with a distance function or similarity function, then we can map from data to concepts, so each point gets mapped, such that the pairwise distances, for example, between these points gets preserved. So far away points stay far away from each other and vice versa. Now, where would we get the similarity functions for words and cats and things like that? Well, it's 2022, so we use them out. For example, for words, we can use Word2Vec, which is pretty well known, and just map our data to this word embedding uh, using its similarity function to represent our data. Let's look at an example. So here we have these authors, so people who have published at this conference, and the word embedding. Now we, we project both. Uh, here we have the author embedding, here we have the word embedding, and we project them just to compare to a traditional visualization. This is not strictly required. And these lines represent a part of our metaphor that we have computed. So for example, Maori's green becomes the word user. We're using author aliases here to avoid copyright issues and things like that. But there is a slight connection that you might be able to figure out. So coming back to Maori's green, he becomes a user. And for example, someone similar to him is Hernandez becomes measurement. Makes sense. User measurement from technical literature. But there are also more interesting cases. For example, Krista Murphy, which appears to be far away from him in the original visualization, is actually gets maps to a mouse, user mouse, like a computer mouse, actually quite strongly related. But even better, mouse is also similar to insect in a biology kind of way. And you see, we get these cases, and actually quite often, where a word has multiple meanings that it uses to connect to different parts of the space, kind of exploiting the high dimensionality of a word space compared to a 2D plot. Now, an application for this could be, say, we encode your research interest and you print that single word or several words on your badge, and then you can go to a social event and just kind of have a fun way of approaching people to figure out if you have something in common or not. Let's look at a different example, Kai authors to cats. Now, first thing we need to do, again, we need to train a cat embedding. Now, cats are very easily embedded into stuff, so quite straightforward, and we get out this nice space where similar cats are mapped to nearby points, so we get low distances between them, and we can use this for a metaphor. As a result, we get out these clusters, like for example, this white, gray, black, white kind of a cluster. And if we check, all the authors there are working visualization or visual analytics. Similarly, you easily find a cluster of black cats uh, corresponding to mobile and ubiquitous computing. And there's kind of a small outlier cluster with orange cats in cages that correspond to psychology and sociology, which is an appropriate metaphor. Of course, if you are not okay with mapping to cats and you don't want to use a cat image as your avatar, we can also style your avatar based on your research interest. For this, we do the Seigraph authors to styles metaphor. We train a style embedding. I'm going to skip the ML details of that. And we get out also a nice space where nearby images have similar styles. And what we do then is that we map authors to this style donor images, and then we can transfer the artistic style back onto you, like bio photo. For example, these two pairs have similar research, and therefore they get mapped to a similar 
style donor and get similar style in the photographs, which you can immediately see from uh, looking at the pictures. And as a counterexample, consider this dissimilar pairs. It's also pretty straightforward to notice that these authors have very similar, uh, very different styles, and therefore their research interest might also be quite different. Now we have many more examples of these metaphors, which I have to skip here. So please check out the paper. And now I'll jump to the best example, in my opinion, movies to stars metaphor. Now here we have taken the top movies and mapped them to stars in the night sky, getting out this nice large infographic. But this is not just a distance-based metaphor, this is a hybrid approach. So we preserve distances like before, ne similar movies get mapped to nearby stars in the sky, uh, but we also make sure that movies with high rating are mapped to the brightest stars, so the best movies shine in the sky, sort of. As a result, we get out these nice clusters, for example, uh, kind of movie constellations. Here we have Boatis, which becomes this anime constellation. The best, the highest rated movie here is Spirited Away, which gets mapped to the brightest star. We get out this sort of Tarantino-ish constellation with Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, but also Snatch. And my favorite, Corona Borealis, uh, gets these Pixar and Disney movies, and specifically Lion King gets mapped to Alfeca. Now, Corona Borealis is known as the Northern Crown, and Alfeca is called a jewel of the Northern Crown, so kind of Lion King gets the jewel of the crown, which is kind of cool. And <laughs> honestly, like every time I look at this guy now and I see Corona Borealis, I immediately think Lion King, like this is burned into my brain. And <laughs> maybe it's a nice property of this metaphor also that you kind of connect with the data in this way. So quickly summarizing the differences in our opinion between metaphors and tradition of this, we think metaphors are more flexible. You can map to anything. You can map to cats, to dogs, cars, stars, dinosaurs, pyramids, aliens, really anything. Metaphors are also quite engaging. Like it's more fun to look at cats than at bar charts and intuitive in the sense that it's easy to spot similar cats, but maybe it's not so intuitive to read a PCA plot or something like this. However, of course, they sacrifice, they sacrifice accuracy because figuring out exactly how similar two cats are is more difficult than reading a bar chart. And they also don't provide a visual overview, the kind of aggregation that you might get from a scatter plot. Therefore, we consider their applications to be strongest in personal visualization, informal context, where you're engaging with kind of engagement is more important than the accuracy, maybe, or you're conveying data to non-scientific audience. Uh, there, it could be really nice. And most importantly, do you have any ideas? So the goal of this paper is to put out this concept, uh, this crazy concept to the community. And maybe you have some cool application idea that we don't see because we're still sort of still in search of that killer app to show it off. And the paper and supplemental materials have way, 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 way more. Uh, so please check that out too. And thank you for listening.